Today on WSRH Extra, we see how improperly disposing of even one glove can have a drastic effect. Also, we take a look at how education worldwide is beginning to adapt. Plus, we meet a drummer whose passion for music goes far beyond his drumstick. WSRH Extra starts now. Welcome to this episode of WSRH Extra. I'm Alyssa Schwab. And I'm Ann Perry. As the pandemic continues to be a major concern, sanitation practices are still in full swing. And as we continue to broadcast from the safety of our own homes, many people continue to brave the world in hopes of fighting for the last roll of toilet paper. And while protective products are meant to keep people safe, it has begun to do the opposite when it comes to the health of the environment. WSRH Extra reporter Justin Backer shows us the importance of properly disposing these products. Many precautions are being taken across South Florida to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Among those is the use of personal protective equipment such as face masks and gloves. However, a new problem has surfaced, as personal protective equipment is not being disposed of properly. With the virus going around and the possibility that the virus is infecting the gloves, the mask, and so forth, I think it's putting everybody in danger. This is also affecting essential workers, as it has now become their responsibility to pick up the trashed equipment. It's a lot of our jobs, and a lot of us are coming in contact with this personal protective equipment that's supposed to be protecting you from being sick. So, like, it's kind of gross that we have to deal with picking all of this stuff up. Many have said that they believe littering this protective equipment will eventually have a drastic effect on the environment. That, plus, of course, having the extra stuff laying around the earth, I think it is going to affect the environment one way or the other. You're leaving plastic latex gloves around the parking lot. Animals can eat them, they can um, get lifted up into the air by the wind, they'll end up in canals, they'll end up in the ocean. It's not right. Wearing personal protective equipment such as gloves like these are one of the many ways that people are doing their part to keep the community COVID free. However, it's important that we dispose of this equipment properly. For WSH Extra, I'm Justin Backer. With schools shut down all across the nation due to COVID-19, there have been many changes in the way testing will be administered. WSRH Extra reporter Shelby Hatcher dives into the new changes. As the 2019-2020 school year is forced to come to an early close, students and teachers alike are having to adjust to online learning. One of the biggest adjustments is for AP students. There is a lot of changes to the AP testing program um, for this year because of COVID-19. Instead of taking a several hour multiple choice AP exam at school, students are gonna be taking a 45 minute online exam from their home. So the preparation for that new exam format is gonna look very different. AP tests aren't the only tests affected by COVID-19. Cambridge has canceled their entire June 2020 ACE testing series. However, administration says students will still receive their grades. Cambridge is going to be working with the schools to determine evidence. Uh, they are asking for us to determine the predicted grades for each of the students. The teachers will be going based upon what the students have submitted, the work that they have, if it is up to Cambridge level. Governor Ron DeSantis has waived FSA and EOC tests this year. However, this does not mean underclassmen will not have to take the tests. So the FSAs for seniors this year, that graduation requirement has been waived, meaning the math requirement and the reading requirement has not been waived for 9th, 10th, and 11th graders. Those students, though, will have to either retake it next year or make a concordance score to meet the graduation requirement. Although this is not the ideal circumstance for students across the globe, this is just one way that people have adapted as the world around us changes. For WSRH Extra, I'm Shelby Hatcher. With COVID-19 plaguing our globe, many health professionals are the ones being put at risk the most. WSRH Extra reporter Emily Carbosi shows us the concerns many health professionals share. The COVID-19 pandemic has recently swept the nation and continues to affect many, leading to increased sanitation practices. However, for nurses, these practices work a little differently in the hospital. We all um, wear N95 mask first, and then we cover up with a surgical mask on top of that. Uh, we have a, a face shield, um, so that's our other barrier. 
and a lot of nurses wear like a surgical cap also. While nurses have been covering up with multiple face masks, they also have routine to protect their bodies in order to prevent bringing sickness home to their families. They started giving us scrubs where, so I go in and like either regular clothes or my own scrubs, I change out of them. I put on scrubs that they provide for us every day now. And then we also wear a, a gown. Although hospitals across the nation have been taking these precautions to help protect those on the front lines, many still fear being exposed to COVID-19. For some nurses, that fear is even greater. I'm concerned just because I am asthmatic and I know one of the um, health issues has been with asthmatic patients. While people across the globe continue to self-isolate in fear of their safety, first responders face the virus head on despite their concerns. For WSRH Extra, I'm Emily Carbocci. With people still practicing social distancing, the use of public transportation has heavily declined. WSRH Extra reporter Hunter Wood shows us the effects this pandemic is having on mass transportation. People across the nation rely on public mass transportation to get them where they need to go. But as COVID-19 has surged across the U.S., the transportation industry has taken a major hit. And although many efforts have been taken to make these services safer, an article by Transit Center has found that ridership has declined by about 90% in recent months. With there's people using it, you're not sure if they have it or not, so you don't want to take the risk. So for me, it's safer to not use it because you don't know what's going on and what's out there. So. While John shares the concerns of many public transportation users, others such as his brother Raymond have stopped using public transportation for a different reason. Yeah, times have changed. The schedules aren't as good as they were before. Doesn't really line up with my work schedule, so it's easier to drive and cheaper right now. Although John and Raymond represent much of why public ridership has declined, Raymond says that people who now work from home have also caused the emptiness he sees on the trains. The long railroads less, less people on them because of, I guess the way the time schedules work and a lot of people are working from home. Although this virus has caused chaos among the transportation industry, both John and Raymond have said that they believe things will return to normal after this pandemic has run its course. For WSRH Extra, I'm Hunter Wood. Early this month, the school district of Palm Beach County canceled all in-person graduation ceremonies due to COVID-19, taking away one of the most major milestones. WSRH Extra reporter Dylan Backer shows us how many seniors are now being recognized for their achievements. COVID-19 has already taken away many of the events meant to cap off the school year for seniors and the celebration of their biggest accomplishment may also be taken away, as graduation ceremonies have been called off. The decision to postpone graduation really was made for us by the, by the government by having these uh, stay-at-home guidelines and the social distancing guidelines in place. So there was really nothing we could do as far as having those on time. In addition, we had to cancel our contract with the Florida Fair, South Florida Fairgrounds 30 days prior to ceremonies beginning. The school district had to cancel their contract with the fairgrounds due to it being named a site for a COVID-19 field hospital if needed. In order to still recognize this big milestone, the school district recently announced they will proceed with ceremonies virtually. However, some students have mixed emotions about this change. It's a nice way to recognize everyone's efforts and to actually give everyone that little moment to shine and that little moment to just have their recognition for completing high school. But at the same time, you don't have that same feeling as if you were walking across the stage and getting that diploma. I wanted to see everybody from all the four years I was with, you know, and their cap and gown and seeing them get their diploma in person. But unfortunately, we have to hear our names called and sit at home on a computer and just listen for our names. Although a traditional ceremony is not taking place as of right now, Dr. Campbell says he's hoping that the school can host some sort of celebration in the future. We are adamant that we are going to provide some kind of an in-person graduation ceremony whenever that is safely possible. While this is a major disappointment for most, Class of 2020 students are trying to make the most out of this new look graduation. For WSH Extra, I'm Dylan Backer. Taking a step back in time to when COVID-19 was the least of our worries, music has been an inspiration to many since before the dawn of time. WSRH Extra reporter Ashley Pellicone introduces us to a drummer that's passions for music has been his driving force. For many people, music has become an outlet for expression. 
Patrick Johansson began his dream of becoming a musician at a very young age. I saw Kiss on TV in Sweden when I was five years old, maybe, and uh, I saw what they did, how much happiness they brought to the crowd. You see, but, oh my God, everyone's screaming, ah! That energy, right, that made me, and made me want to pick up the drumsticks right away. After everyone in his life told him his dream was impossible, Patrick used this negativity to fuel his motivation to succeed in the music industry. I always want to play drums. That was my job. I remember being a kid to go to school and what are you gonna, what are you gonna do for a living? I'm gonna play drums. You can't just move to America. You have to have a job. And that guy Yngwie, he did it. Maybe I should go play with him. And I said that as a joke. And he's the best guitar player in the world. How are you gonna go play with him? I guess I just have to go home and practice the drums then. So I'd be good enough. Just good enough to be in a band, right? And funny enough, one day he called and asked me, hey, do you wanna move to America? And I learned a lot playing with him. I played with him 14 years and it was a very good experience to do. Thankful for that, you know. Patrick's passion for music has not only inspired him to be the musician he had always hoped to be, but allowed his daughter to appreciate her father's ambition. But I do like his drumming. Like, he used to teach me how to play the drums. For many musicians, feeling the rhythm is purely instrumental. However, for Patrick, his definition is more than just music. So for me, to feel the rhythm is when I play the drums, I feel alive. If I'm sad or happy, it doesn't matter. It feels like I'm plugging in power. And you see, you feel the energy. And when you can transcend that energy to the crowd and feel it back and forward, that's the ultimate rhythm of life. I, call it. I never wanted to be the best drummer in the world. I never wanted to be famous. I didn't care. I just wanted to play drums because I liked it. After seeing Kiss on TV, I didn't find the drums. The drums found me. Musicians like Patrick help listeners maintain their rhythm while being a symbol. <laughs> For many to look up to. For WSRH Extra, I'm Ashley Pellicone. While people continue to self-isolate, many are finding the need to have a furry friend at home. WSRH Extra reporter Riley Sullivan shows us how the community is coming together to rescue these animals. Amidst all of the restrictions and shutdowns due to the pandemic, one silver lining has emerged. For the first time in history, Palm Beach County Animal Care and Control has emptied one of their three dog kennels. We still have adopters and fosters coming in, um, so we actually, for the first time in history, have more animals leaving our facility than they are coming in, which is pretty awesome. Although one amazing accomplishment has been made in our local community, there are still animals that need our help. In our adoption program, we are down to 19 dogs. We have seven cats, two horses, and one rooster. We need your help. We still need you to come out and adopt and foster and help network what we have. Uh, we also have some amazing local rescue partners. Um, so if you don't find what you're looking for at our facility, we could definitely make some recommendations. Some high school seniors are staying positive as they are finding time to have a pandemic partner and build new bonds. So I first um, had a pregnant mother who gave birth to nine puppies. And we knew that with the pandemic, it would have been hard to get supplies and make sure they all get homes. So we took in four of them. I fostered one dog. His name is Tyson and he's a seven year old pit bull and he's one of the sweetest dogs I've ever met. My mom had sent me a link on Facebook from our local animal shelter asking if families would like to foster animals to have a quarantine buddy. If you or your family have spare time on your hands, you can always call Palm Beach Animal Care and Control at 561-233-1200 to adopt or foster a loving animal like this one. For WS3 Extra, I'm Riley Sullivan. Thanks, Riley. Well, that's it for this episode of WSRH Extra. I'm Alyssa Schwab. And I'm Ann Perry. Don't forget to tweet us at Seminole Ridge TV. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.